General Regulation 465, Antelope and Elk Waiting Periods, LCB File R141-16, Management Analyst 3, Maureen Hollinger, Workshop Public Comment Allowed. The Commission will hold a workshop to consider amending Chapter 502 of the Nevada Administrative Code. Existing regulation allows a, per allows a person to apply in any year for an antelope tag. If they receive an antelope tag for horns longer than years and harvest an antelope, they are in a waiting period of five years before they are eligible to apply again. Existing regulation for antlered elk allows a person to apply in any year if they did not receive a tag in the previous five years or did not harvest. It also stipulates a person is eligible to apply after 10 years if they harvest an antlered elk. This amendment to the regulation would standardize the waiting period for a person to be eligible to apply for each of the species after receiving a tag. Antelope waiting period after receiving a tag would be three years. Antlered elk waiting period after receiving a tag would be five years. Ms. Hollinger. Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Chairman Wallace. Maureen Hollinger, Nevada Department of Wildlife Management Analyst 3 for the license office. Um, can you hear me okay? I'm a little hoarse this morning, this afternoon. Um, elk and antelope herds have increased and there's a growing public desire to reduce the waiting periods for hunters to apply for tags if they've previously received an antelope or a bull elk tag. There was interest in standardizing the waiting periods associated with each of these species regardless of the harvest in an effort to help minimize confusion. Concerns were voiced regarding the increased number of clients who would become eligible for the draw if waiting periods were reduced. Additionally, there were concerns voiced about hunters not harvesting animals because they could apply again soon versus the longer wait of harvest. Standardization of the waiting periods is believed by the Tag Allocation and Application Hunt Committee and the department to be an effective means to encourage hunters to harvest if given the opportunity, which benefits the department's management goals. So um, for background currently, like we've, uh, the chairman said earlier, if a hunter receives an antelope tag and harvests, the antelope hunter is ineligible to apply for an antelope tag for the next five years. If the hunter does not harvest, they can, they're eligible the following year. If a hunter with a bull elk tag harvests an elk, that hunter is ineligible to apply for 10 years. And if the hunter does not harvest, he's ineligible to apply for the next five with a proposed regulation amends and standardizes the waiting periods. Uh, with the antelope, it's to three years, and with the bull elk, it would be to five. There's a table in the support material that kind of gives you a visual on the same uh, information. And then uh, I'm gonna go through a brief explanation of the sections. Uh, section one is the subsection, is uh, the section pertaining to uh, antelope waiting periods. It's NAC 502-341. Uh, there's an amendment in some LCB housekeeping language to make the verbiage consistent with other species on waiting periods. In subsection one, uh, this subsection provides the authority to apply in any year for an antelope tag if the person is eligible to do so. The new language in the first sentence where it reads except as otherwise provided in subsection two directs the reader to the exception of the horns longer than ears waiting period. The addition of Anne in that last sentence um, where it reads to apply in any year for a tag to hunt an antelope, I would recommend that we remove that. Um, it was uh, provided by LCB and was not requested by the department. We request the removal um, because it restricts the client to a single application for antelope. Adding the word removes the flexibility of the commission to set application eligibility in an annual like regulation like you do every year. And an example of that flexibility is what you have now for your bull and cow elk. So I, I think it's a, a good recommendation to maybe make that edit to remove the word and out of that last sex, section. Subsection two, that's the sub subsection that pertains to the eligibility for horns longer than ears antelope. LCB also did some housekeeping in, on the references in this section and there's removal of the replacement tag references and reformatting those later in the section. The new language, or which reads, or unless his or her privilege is limited or revoked pursuant to law, a person is eligible, eligible to apply for a tag to hunt, is some standard language that there, we've added here to make it consistent with other species regulations. And it uh, is eligibility language for that consistency for the horns longer than ear antelope. The next, uh, and then finally, there's the uh, final removal of the, any person who harvests um, that's to make, to remove the 
the uh, restriction on the five year and to allow us to change it to three years. So this removes harvesting an antelope as a requirement of that restriction. The last line displays the update and to, from a five to three years. Section two. Section two is the elk waiting periods. It's NAC 502-361. There's several sections being addressed. Um, subsection one is for the bull elk. This subsection addresses bull elk eligibility and for standardizing the waiting period for elk. As the current subsection three is proposed to remove, be removed, and that's regarding the harvesting of bull elk in the 10 year wait, the reference in subsection three to subsection three is also being removed in that uh, first subsection. The new NAC reference is housekeeping added by LCB, just referencing the person back to the exception in the Dream Tag program. Um, and just makes it clearly identified from both the directions. So it's listed in the dream tag regs. Now they're putting it here so you don't have to go looking for it. Subsection two, um, we created this as a new subsection and started some renumbering. Um, this was to pull the antlerless elk eligibility out and make it a little more visible. It was the last line in the bull in that first subsection. And when it came to finding it for the public and for myself even, I knew it was there, in, but it was the last line. It was kind of hidden, so we're making its own standalone sub subsection. Subsection three, this subsection is regarding the spike elk. The removal of if he or she did not receive a spike elk tag or replacement spike elk tag in the previous year. This is housekeeping. We, um, our waiting period right now is following the like antlerless elk. This actually says, you know, the second year, and totally missed it when we, we did the spike elk because we wanted it like the antlerless elk. So that was a, a mea culpa on that. So we're cleaning that up. Um, and then the final change is in section three, and this is also housekeeping. When we did antelope waiting periods several years ago when we made it five in one, or five in the following year, uh, we totally, LCB and the department myself, missed the antelope waiting periods in the partnership and wildlife section. So it's been reading five and five since four or five years now, but we've been treating it like everything else, like it was supposed to be changed. So we're housekeeping on uh, the section three for the partnership in wildlife so that it uh, reads the same eligibility as all other uh, antelope tags. So with that, that's the presentation for the workshop for the waiting periods. Are there any questions? Thank you, Maureen. Any questions for Maureen from the commission? <clears throat> yes, John. As I was trying to read this and under, understand what, I'm sorry. I thought this would work. As I was reading through this, I, I when I read standardization, I thought we were standardizing both, not just the waiting periods for successful harvest or not harvest. And maybe you guys did this, but I'd like a little bit more background information, if I could, about standardizing those the wait periods set as three years and five years coming from 10, because we're changing these, those, but uh, I, I tried to research, and see where that, those numbers come from, and I couldn't, couldn't really find any discussion about it. If someone could fill me in, please. Commissioner Johnston. Uh, I don't know if I can answer the question of when or how the five and 10 were established for elk. I know that, um, when I first got on the TAC committee, this issue came forward to try to standardize the wait period for the elk hunt to just make it uniform. And there was discussion as to whether it should be a uniform 10-year waiting period, whether you're successful or unsuccessful, or a uniform five-year period. But there was belief that it needed to be uniform across the board so that you didn't have individuals uh, in the field where you're trying to meet harvest objectives saying, well, I'm not going to take this bowl at the end of the season because if I do, I'm ineligible for 10. If I pass, I'll be back in the draw five years from now. That was a lot of the discussion. There's some anecdotal evidence of that. We've even had people at the TAC committee talk about how in the antelope context, they passed several times because they thought, I'll be ineligible for five years. I may never draw an antelope tag again, and I want to go hunt. So the antelope was a little bit different. Uh, in the sense that people thought the five years was too long with the number of tags uh, available to shorten it. 
And as the discussion progressed, I said, well, if we're going to shorten the waiting period for those who are successful, we ought to still have the uniformity that if they draw the antelope tag uh, and, and, and are not successful on their hunt, that they still have a three-year waiting period as well. So that's how the, the discussion centered on getting to a uniform period. I don't think, and uh, Ms. Hungler probably can answer the question better than I, as to how they were initially established at five for antelope or ten and five for elk. Because uh, I just, I don't know that answer to that question. <coughs> yeah. Some, I'd have to look at an NAC book because the NACs actually reference the changes at the end of the, the NAC. but. The antelope went through one change already. I want to say it was about five years ago where it went from um, five for the any legal weapon and if you were archery to, to you're eligible the following year. Well, if you harvested, you were out five regardless of the weapon and then if it was archery, you were eligible the, the following year. We standardized that and went five and eligible the following year across weapon types and that's when we missed the PIW reference. Um, so that the sheep and the elk came up at the same time, and that's when we went 10 years on the sheep, but we did not change the elk. Um, it stayed five and, and ten, 10 and five uh, at that same time. So, but it's been in place uh, since I've been with the department. I don't recall elk ever being something other than 10 and five, and that's a long time, so. Commissioner Drew. I can answer part of this. And um, when I first started getting involved, and I think it was probably early 2000s, Jack, when we sat on the original TAC committee, we looked through all the waiting periods, and I think we looked at um, <coughs> bonus point categories. And at that time, maybe 15 was the most you could have bonus point wise. Uh, and we kind of looked at behavior, and it, you know, it turned out that most of the guys with max points were putting in for one or two units, not all five, and so they're being very choosy about it. Um, we had the discussions on all the species we elected at that time, I think, not to change anything with antelope, but we didn't change anything with elk, and then I think we shortened the bighorn sheep and the mountain goat from lifetime to 10. Um, but since then, and I don't know the exact numbers, but we have had a lot more antelope tag availability as well as, and probably more so with elk tag availability. And so I can't speak, Brad, for the process that your committee looked at. If you looked at um, bonus points or, you know, how many folks have max points for elk or antelope or any of that. But I know on the, the first iteration of this, we certainly looked at that. But a lot has changed in that 15, 10, 15 years. So. Uh, I can just say we did not look at it from a uh, accumulation of bonus points. Uh, from that angle, it was much more of a desire, I think, to short waiting, shorten waiting periods in light of the increased number of tags especially and to have the uniformity across the board uh, for both successful and unsuccessful hunters. That was the focus of the discussion. So mainly it was uh, looking at the supply side, the tags, and not the demand side. Yeah, I think that's correct. Although we did do some analysis of the impact of if you change these waiting periods and people come back into the draw, for example, someone who's been sitting out, uh, who, who was successful on a bull elk hunt six years ago, they're obviously going to be eligible for the draw and be back into the draw four years early. Now, there's no way to change waiting periods and not have some impact, but. Um, my recollection when we looked at that and you compare that when they come back into the draw with zero bonus points, it should have a marginal to no impact on the odds of drawing, although it will have some impact and there's no doubt about it. You have people who are eligible who could draw a tag with no bonus points or one or two, uh, but it was a pretty minor uh, overall consideration. I mean, it was, we looked at that at the TAC committee level with the information from the department and systems consultants. To clarify my understanding, the wait period originally was meant to give first-time applicants or a person that's never got an elk tag or, or an antelope tag, give them a statistical advantage in obtaining that tag pro over someone who's already received one. Is that, is that a correct understanding? 
I, you know, I, I wasn't around, I wasn't around when the waiting periods were established. I think that's got to be into the mindset of, look, if you drew a bull elk tag and you're successful, you're going to be out of the draw for a period of time to let others kind of come through the the draw process with those who've already had the opportunity not being eligible. Seems like Maureen too. When I I remember, uh, there's been more in my life where we couldn't hunt elk because there were none in Nevada. It was one shot in your life once you kill them. It was lifetime. So they changed it to ten years. But originally it was elk was once in your lifetime. And that was probably the first five years or so of it. It's been thirty. I don't know how long we've been hunting elk, but it was once in your lifetime. Was that a question? No, I'm just pointing okay. out. That you, yeah, you said you think it was you. you oh, it was before my too, time. I hate to say young. that. You're too young. You're too young. There was a preference point program for a while too. So, does that address your concerns, Commissioner Albert? Uh, yes, that that answers my question. But I guess now uh, uh, one one other question, maybe to the department. Um, can we set? Uh, a standardization, a formula of some sort that uh, considers supply, considers demand, and sets, a, a, say, a, a certain probability that uh, the first-time applicant or a person that's never, which first-time applicant is, uh, I guess I'm associating with guys that's never drew a tag, that gives him a, a, a higher uh, statistical advantage and make it that would standardize it you know you pick a say a 50 percent probability that uh we that's what we want to establish 50 percent probability and then what I mean, i'm just asking them is that a doable thing with those three factors so <clears throat> I, I guess uh, to back up a little bit maybe address some of your earlier questions i think that it'd be safe to say fair to say that the intent of the waiting period was, is to spread opportunity and i don't know that that really separates supply or demand it's, it's based on both um, i don't believe there was ever uh, a, a mathematical approach uh, in in a calculation uh, and you know certainly there's a uh, more opportunity for pronghorn more opportunity for elk now than at a time when those waiting periods were established uh, I think that we could certainly develop um, guidelines that could recognize both the supply and demand uh, and have some estimate uh, albeit somewhat <coughs> speculative some estimate as to what that would do to to draw odds. Um, certainly the, the department would need some guidance um, on how what, what factors um, the Commission would want to consider is it is it first time is it people that haven't had those tags before is it somebody that's on their second tag is the number of opportunities that they've had in the past a factor is age a factor um, but I think that working uh, with Don and, and Monty at Systems Consultants and with some guidance from the Commission we could begin to, to model some of those things and I don't know if the if the TAC I don't know how engaged the TAC was on and or what the objectives of of lowering this is uh, and maybe that would maybe that would shed some light on the discussion what is the objective in going from the 10 year to the five year I think the standardization uh, answers a little bit clearer because uh, what, what I read in here is that uh, there's now an incentive for people to potentially falsify or not harvest because they would have a shorter waiting period so it makes that having them standardized between successful and unsuccessful makes sense but I think the question maybe that Commissioner Allenberg is getting at is what is the desired outcome or objective of going from a 10 year to a five year and what would that do mathematically to the odds of somebody who maybe hasn't drawn before what what would be the, the ramifications of that I think the the idea of going from 10 to 5 years was to increase the opportunity to draw another tag and not have that lengthy period especially with the increased number of elk tags that we have 
and uh, so I think it was more opportunity driven the second thing is we did look at the math and I think as part of that analysis we or I shouldn't the, the, the committee was presented with information as to for example those in the 10-year waiting period who had harvested up are they still applying for other tags and it was obviously yes I mean overwhelming those are your avid hunters if they're in that 10-year waiting period they're still putting in for deer and other tags that they're eligible to draw so we were pretty confident that if you shorten the waiting period they will then reapply but then what impact does that have on people in the pipeline so to speak who have certain amount of bonus points and it was not going to be a significant change in the odds in terms of drawing when you look at overall number of applicants number of tags when you weight in the bonus points I mean it will have some impact but it wasn't going to decrease that person who never drew a tag odds dramatically and a lot goes into this because there are people who have amassed a certain number of bonus points especially for an elk hunt they're only putting in for certain units that's the hunt they want they feel like they've invested in it by having now amassed a certain number of bonus points whereas you know if they would put in all fill in all their hunter choices for you know the number of units that are that the hunts available they would more have a better chance at drawing so I think there's a lot of personal decision making that goes on in the draw that you can't boil it down to how is this specifically going to impact this person's draw odds by having a shorter waiting period uh, so we looked at that but I think the overall idea of decreasing the waiting period was the increase in supply increase hunter opportunity and then have the uniform standard of five years across the board for elk same thing with the antelope uh, I think that originally came up with we have this five-year waiting period for antelope and you know a lot of people are drawing tags you know after getting one or two bonus points do we really need that five-year waiting period and then there's no waiting period if you're drawn unsuccessful let's make that uniform I think that was also increased opportunity uh, for people to put in for the draw mr. drew I'll speak on this just a little bit first of all a disclosure I have absolutely zero conflict of interest here because I just came off my elk 10-year waiting period I'm about to come off my antelope five-year period so as far as I'm personally concerned we're five years too late on any sort of change here <laughs> <laughs> but just in my time um, in the previous rendition of the TAC and kind of thinking about this myself I have had some correspondence I've had people ask you know if it makes sense to maybe go to a standardized seven years for elk um, I understand what you're saying I mean we could look at you know statewide average draw odds and adjust up or down based on how many tags you know the kind of the balance of supply and demand um, my sense on waiting periods is it's probably better to change less than more because anytime you make a change someone's ox is going to get gored and people are going to be upset um, and so I think looking at it periodically through the lens of the the NAC makes a lot of sense um, I think when you get down to the brass tax if this change were to go through you have kind of two different strategies when people apply you, you have the people that apply for one or two premium units and those are the units they want to apply for and they're gonna wait however many years it takes to get that and then you have the folks that put in all five units and they'll even look at the draw odds to look for the easier units to put at the bottom because they want to hunt more and for those people I don't think there's gonna be as a big of an impact but I think the people that have the strategy of picking one or two or three premium units I think that that is the segment that's probably going to be impacted most by this proposed change um, you know and me personally I don't necessarily have a dog in the fight one way or the other uh, it was surprising to me that a lot of the county advisory boards supported the change because I have heard you know some outside discussion about you know maybe looking at seven for elk or whatever but get kind of given the response that I've heard so far I'm, I'm personally pretty comfortable with what's being proposed but that's just kind of my logic and thinking Kind of behind the scenes or in my mind yes I agree I, I that's why I was surprised and asked the question because there there was much, not much public comment on it so everybody seems to be to accept that I I wanted to know that for I guess make in, sure I read all that stuff correctly and in this topic my thoughts. this topic was vetted pretty thoroughly through the TAC on a number of meetings and the public sentiment was certainly in favor of the changes that are being proposed uh, 
Uh, there was certainly some people who were opposed to it, but I think the overwhelming public feedback was to go to the shorter waiting periods and to make them uniform across the board. And I will not be voting on this because I am in the 10-year waiting period. Um, I don't think that has influenced me one way or the other. Uh, this really started before I was in the waiting period. Uh, so. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I just want one comment. I, you know, and there are people out there in the public that uh, go hunt elk every year, and I think we know that. I've been one of them. If you can afford it, you just go down and see a rancher and buy them for whatever it costs, and there's no waiting period. And sometimes I think we ought to stop and think about how equitable or fair that is to the rest of the people in this state that can't afford to go do that or don't know somebody or in that little clique of people that are running these private hunting clubs and certain areas with ranchers getting all the, the tags and I, I could I know a lot about it especially in southern Nevada and I think we ought to take a look at that and think about putting a waiting period on that so I can afford it I can go down and spend ten thousand dollars and go hunt elk in 222 anytime I want but I should have to wait the same waiting period that somebody else that's on the list that can't afford it that's my opinion but I don't think anybody here considers the you know the person that's out there working for a living sometimes that can't afford it rich guys do it you know, they hunt every single year sometimes they'll kill two and three elk I know I'm there. some of them are friends of mine how right is that and how fair is that how equitable is that not two in my opinion if we're representing really representing the people in this state that you know and it was equitable to be distributed because I, I can tell you when <coughs> early on in my life I couldn't afford it and I knew, you know, how hard it is to get an elk tag. I got, I got a lot of bonus points. I've never drawn one, but I've killed elk in the state. So that's my two cents. Further comments from the commission before I take it to public comment? I, I have Commissioner Hubs. Um, well, one thing that just came up when I was listening was, so, I mean, basically, we have not really assessed how this might impact the odds of a first-time applicant or an applicant that may only be able to to like afford one location each year in hopes of possibly one day obtaining a tag i mean i, I guess i'm trying to find out we haven't run those numbers yet with this no we did right so you look at where you're at you look at last year or the year before and you say that here's how many people applied for the hunt if you shorten the waiting period to five years, here are the number of people who would then become eligible, okay? Then you say, okay, if they become eligible because their waiting period is shortened, will they apply? And I think we, by looking at their habits and applying during the waiting period, that yes, they will. So we assumed they will be back in and applying for a bull elk tag. But given all of the personal choices that go in, the number of bonus points people have, you can't determine for a fact how it's going to affect this particular individual's draw odds who, let's say, has seven bonus points but only puts in for one unit, one hunter choice, rather than, I think it's up to five, versus the person who will fill all five of the hunter choice selection in terms of hunt units. You just don't know because of how the draw works with the bonus points. But what we were confident was is that by adding, shortening the waiting period, having people back into the draw was not going to have this dramatic impact against those currently putting in for the draw. Right, but do we have a, a relative idea in certain, I mean, obviously, I'm sure all of you do, I mean, how long you typically wait to get a tag in a certain area? I mean, do we have an I ballpark figure? It's different. It's did completely different for almost every species and almost every unit. I mean, if you look at the draw odds, Mike, for, please. If you look at draw odds for mule deer across the different units, which we get in our static big game status book every year, they go from I think upwards of a hundred to one to two to one to one to one if you want to go archery hunting and there's almost as big a variation in every other species. And so it, it comes down purely to who wants to hunt where and what kind of hunt do they want to have. And you can't really, pay, I mean, you could look at it, I guess, across the board on a, on, a, on a ratio average, but I don't know that you could throw out 
any sort of typically it takes X number of years for an antelope tag or X number of years for an elk tag. And I, I don't have those numbers with me, but I remember in the TAC meeting not only getting the information from the department and from systems consultants, but also doing some calculations while we were in that meeting. And it becomes like down into the 1% to 2% type um, the addition to the pool of applicants uh, is, is pretty small when you think about it because there's not that many people that are going to be eligible who currently are not eligible by shortening, shortening the wait period so that when you add those people back into the number of people already applying and the number of tags available it doesn't dramatically change on that straight applicants to tag numbers ratio it doesn't change it materially it does change it but it's not significant then if to go down further into the numbers to try to figure out how it's going to impact any particular one individual's odds is is that's when you run into the roadblocks of personal choices how do they apply uh, things of that nature I, mean, I think it's it's even like a, as Jeremy would say you, you can look at just a, very popular hunt area six deer tags and you look at the difference between drawing in the early season versus the late season and there's some guys or some applicants who say no I want the late tag and not the early tag and they're not going to put in for the early tag and that affects their odds of drawing but by how they are applying so there's a lot of factors into it but I know we looked at that issue as to the number of current applicants how many would be added into that pool of applicants with a shorter waiting period of five years and comparing that to the number of tags available and it's 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 a marginal um, and I think that was why the public sentiment was in favor of shorting the wait waiting period to five years but making it uniform and that way increasing the opportunity of people to draw that tag again further comments Seeing none from the commission, I'll take it to public comment in Elko. Yes, we have a comment. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Jim Cooney, Elko Gap. Uh, we discussed this the other night. We're in basic agreement with the concept of this particular regulation. However, listening to the comments here, uh, it seems like we need to see the final draft before uh, we can wholeheartedly get in there. But we are. Four of the five members of our cap are in agreement with this regulation. Thank you. Any other per public comment in Elko? No further comment. Public comment in Reno? Yes. Uh, Rex Clark speaking on behalf of myself. First, I'd like to disclose I sit on the CAC committee. I did both take it out of the CAC committee put it in work, uh, to go to workshop for the commission. Also, if you pass this regulation on antelope, uh, it will benefit me. Uh, I'm against changing the waiting periods. Uh, antelope, when you look at the demand and success, I believe that if you change this in the first year, it is going to change up on the archery units, you will have 12 or 14 units that will go under prescribed uh, for first choice applicants. Muzzle loaders will have one unit that will be under prescribed for first choice applicants. Within two to three years, I believe we could have 10 to 12 units that will have zero first choice applicants. And that's going to affect archers all the way across the board. Um, when you don't have any first choice applicants, you show no demand for 